Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. People in the Chancellor, South Dakota area will celebrate the life of their former fire chief today. Jeb Ford died in a car crash in the beginning of February. He was a full-time firefighter in Sioux Falls for more than 20 years before becoming the fire chief and chancellor. His funeral and visitation were held earlier in his hometown of Lemon. We were able to send quite a few uh, people um, from Chancellor Fire and Sioux Falls Fire. Um, however, this gives everybody an opportunity to come down and, and talk about Jeb and just celebrate him. The celebration of life for Jeb Ford begins at 6 o'clock this evening at the Chancellor Fire Station. There are four city council races on the ballot in next month's elections in Sioux Falls, and we're introducing you to the candidates in all of them. The people running for one at large spot are nonprofit consultant Pam Cole and nonprofit administrator Rich Mercoris. And I think where it works best is when um, there's ideas that are identified, those ideas are brought to the table, and then uh, the council as a whole has a chance to shape and tinker and to really work together to strengthen that idea. Um, and then there's some consensus built on that group and go out to the community then with the plan moving forward. I feel like I have a lot to offer in regards to having a background in public policy building. And that stems from my work on the school board in Brookings for six years and then in the state legislature uh, two years. You'll meet the candidates running for the other at-large seat on the City Council tonight on Kelloland Weekend News. The election is April 12th. All three candidates running for Sioux Falls Mayor will join Kelloland Media Group for a debate on Tuesday, April 5th, starting at 8 p.m. Central Time. The debate between current Mayor Paul Tanhaken and challengers Taniza Islam and David Zucatis will be broadcast live on Kelloland Television, Kello Extra, and right here on Kelloland.com. Let's get a first look at the forecast now on meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. A cold start to the day out there, but this is going to be as cold as it gets for a good while. So just exercise a little more patience. We'll be rewarded for that in spades as we head into your next work and school week. That being said, outside we go on this Saturday morning, two degrees below zero as we take a look at the waters of Lake Madison. Steam rising off the exposed water almost looks like fire with that orange sunrise overhead. A south wind at nine miles per hour from two degrees below zero to three degrees above zero with a view of Falls Park and a hot air balloon getting in on a cold morning view of the city on the left hand side of your screen a south wind at five miles per hour by the by two degrees below zero in Mitchell to above and here on back below zero in Watertown Brookings Marshall and Aberdeen Four at the Capitol, 13 in Rapid City, 25 toward Buffalo, but there's the wind chill. Double digits below zero along and north of I-90 in eastern and northeastern Kelloland, even 10 degrees below zero for a wind chill in Yankton. Minus eight for Pier, minus seven as far west as Faith. And we do have a wind chill advisory in effect. It's for northeastern Kelloland until 9 a.m. this morning as wind chills could still reach 20 to 30 degrees below zero. Winds will continue to pick up over the course of the morning. There's a wind advisory in Tan until 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain Time today. In Pier, Mulbridge, North Rapid City, Harding County, a high wind warning for that same time frame. We do have a lot of warmth to talk about, though, so we'll get into those details coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, Kelloland beer lovers can give their taste buds a tangy citrus treat for an important cause. Wood Grain Brewing is serving orange beer as a way to promote kidney disease awareness. One of the organizers is a Sioux Falls man who's a two-time kidney transplant recipient. We kind of came up with this idea of hopefully bringing in a new population to kind of explore and understand what kidney disease is and the reasons why. A lot of times if people catch it early enough, they can live a better, healthier lifestyle and slow down the progress. Wood grain will sell the orange beer while supply lasts. The brewers made around 150 gallons. The Sioux Empire Sportsman's Boat Show Camping and Vacation Show is taking place at the Sioux Falls Convention Center and Arena. You'll find the best in resorts, lodges, and camps from the Midwest and Canada, plus the newest fishing boats, pontoons, tackle, and electronics. There are also hunting and fishing seminars taking place throughout the weekend. Today's hours are 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday's hours are 10 to 5. Admission is $10 for adults, children are $2.50, and free for kids 5 and under. 
Sanaz Gourmet in Sioux Falls is hosting a fundraiser for the World Central Kitchen, with 100% of sales going to provide meals for the people of Ukraine. Serving time is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Spring Market in Watertown features crafters, artists, and boutiques selling items at the Watertown Event Center. Kids can also get their pictures taken with the Easter Bunny. Today's hours are from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sunday's hours are 9 to 4. And the Stampede Hockey Team takes on the Sioux City Musketeers. The puck drops at the Danny Sanford Premier Center at 6.05. Adam? Well, as you go through the rest of your day, it is going to rebound nicely considering the cold start to the morning that we had in place. Uh, but we're still going to also be pretty windy through the afternoon, so you'll want to keep that in the back of your mind. Beyond that, a healthy mix of sun and clouds today. A few little flurries in western and northwestern Kelloland, but that's really going to be just about it today. Beyond that, we don't have much of anything going on locally. All the activity is out east of the Mississippi River with a nor'easter really wreaking havoc along the Appalachian Mountains and the Atlantic coastline. That will continue to give several inches of accumulating snowfall from the D.C. metro area all the way up to our Montreal and the Canadian Maritime region as we continue to wait for really anything in terms of appreciable moisture. We do get into the 50s and even a couple of 60s tomorrow, but that's going to be just the beginning of an overall warmer and predominantly dry trend. The one exception is going to be Sunday. We have a little clipper that's going to move on through and try and give a couple of rain and snow showers uh, to portions of the area, especially to the northeast along the North Dakota border, but that's going to be an exception to the overall generally dry rule. From there, we have a lot of warmth on the way as we head into the Ides of March and beyond with opportunities for above average temperatures really sticking around through the end of the weekend beyond the 70 forecast into the first couple of days of spring. Highs today in the 30s to low 40s, East River 40s and 50s out west. But again, it is going to be windy. Lows tonight, mainly in the 20s, with your seven-day forecast featuring not a lot of moisture, but a lot of warmth, especially as we head toward Tuesday going into the end of next week. Have a great day, everybody. For more your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to Kelloland.com.